Welcome to the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Welcome to ITSP Magazine. Every company has a story to tell, from the small startup to the large enterprise, and everything in between. This is one of them. Knowledge is power, now more than ever. Marco. Sean. Have you, have you seen that little bugger? That bot? That bot. It's running around like crazy. What you, you mean? What do you mean? It's, it's that we got rid of it. Well, no, it's one we like. Oh, the good one? It's the good one. But it turned okay. rogue. I don't know. Oh, so there so, are good and bad? See, there it is again. It's just there. <laughs> now it's doubled. There's two didn't of them. We had, didn't we have a conversation about bot, the good and the bad one last year? The good, the bad. And the ugly. There may be some pretty ones too. I mean, we didn't we didn't talk about pretty ones, but I'm sure they're out there. But yeah, we did have a, a good chat with our friends at Imperva, and they produce a report, the Bad Bot Report, I think is what it's called officially. Yeah, we did actually had two episodes where we talked through the findings of the research. Right, what's real traffic? What's made by humans? What's traffic made by bots? What's uh, what are bots for? Are they can they be good? Can they be bad? What makes them ugly? And uh, this year, more research on that front and some changes, which we're going to talk about. Uh, the impact of business is is real and uh, escalating, and the the resulting impact on humanity is uh, very clear as well. And we're going to, we're going to dig into some of that, and uh, hopefully the bots don't take over this conversation today. Maybe we can we can keep it mostly human. <laughs> you never know. I remember from never last year's conversation, I've learned so many things that I had no idea. I've always been thinking about some little string of codes that do something, but then the way that affects society and business and, and our everyday life when we shop online, I, it kind of blew my mind. So I'm kind of curious yeah. to see if, if we're in a better shape, but uh, I don't know. I have some doubts about it. Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe the ugly ones are, are doing better. We'll see. But uh, clearly, Marco, uh, we have no idea about this topic and, and what's going on. It takes uh, a, a set of skilled engineers uh, to really understand where things are happening and, and even more importantly, connection to real environments in, uh, in the business to get some insights of what's, what's actually going on there as well. And bringing that through the report and other uh, direct hands-on insight from, uh, from the field comes Ryan Windham, VP of Application Security at Imperva. Ryan, thanks for joining. Thanks, Sean and Marco. Thanks for having me. And just to check quickly, you're not a bot. I'm not a bot. I'm here you're in the flesh today. You're here in the flesh. All right. So the, the Q&A is with a real human. No, uh, no pop-up bots here. And um, for those listening and and obviously we met you before we started recording but uh it was a first time meeting you um and we want to give our audience an opportunity to do the same so maybe a quick quick view into your journey into your current role and uh why why you like looking and talking about bots so much great great well thank you guys for having me on on your show um, so I've been in the application security and application delivery space for, I guess, about 20, uh, 20 years now or so. So I started at uh, WebSense, if you guys remember WebSense, a secure web gateway company, and uh, was later at F5 Networks, where I ran the uh, security portfolio over there. And I uh, even did some early stage stuff. I was CEO of a company called Sedexis, which was doing kind of next generation uh, application delivery for uh, cloud native applications and uh, they were acquired by Citrix back in 2018 and now I'm uh, uh, over at Imperva um, working with some some colleagues that I've worked with in the past having a good time um, and you know focused on a lot of uh, really you know fraud use cases now um, which is what a lot of this bot activity um, you know ends up amounting to and so Marcos you were you were saying there really is a you know, a huge cost not only to uh, you know end users and uh, you know the, the the vendors that are attacked, um, but also just you know society, you know at large we all end up um, paying paying the cost here. So 
looking forward to this conversation. Absolutely. Looking forward to that and, and invite to people that maybe they want to hear what was the conversation about last year. They can do so, of course, on ITSP Magazine. And in all fairness, there may be people that want to have a clarification about what is a bot. Let's start from the beginning. What What is and why are they bad and why are they good, if there are any good left, and why are they ugly? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's a great place to start. So, you know, very simply, you know, bots are software applications that run automated tasks, basically. Um, and so, you know, we like to think about them as being, you know, good or bad, right? So there are good bots that are out there that are doing things like, you know, let's say you have a website and um, there's a you know, search engine bots that are crawling your website um, so that uh, your website can be found, right? Or there could be um, uh, aggregators um, that are looking at uh, hotel and airfare prices and they're kind of going around and scraping those and, uh, you know, helping you find the best deal on your next vacation. And those are actually a you know, a source of uh, distribution for the airlines and the hotels as well. So they um, they appreciate those. Um, but there's a lot of bad bots out there as well, um, more than we would like. Um, and that number, unfortunately, is, uh, you know, is, is increasing, right? So bad bots are basically, you know, bots that are abusing or misusing uh, websites and web services. And in many cases, um, they're actually committing you know, online fraud. And we can talk about um, kind of the different types of, uh, you know, attacks that these these bots are, are carrying out. But, you know, basically they're emulating real browsers. They're imitating real user uh, behavior in many cases. And so they're very difficult to detect. Um, and when you, you know, combine the fact that there's also good bots out there, it's really hard. What's, you know, what's a human? What's a bot? And if it's a bot, is it, good or is it is it here to do to do harm so it's a hard problem to solve so ryan is it is it always the case that a bot is trying to do something that a human would normally do just at scale perhaps with better precision or are there things that bots can do that that aren't possible by human beyond just the scaling part of it yeah well you know, so if you think about the way that, um, you know, traditional attacks have taken place, you know, non-bot attacks, right, they will you know, essentially exploit uh, software vulnerabilities, right? And so, uh, you know, bots are different because they are actually behaving the way that a human would. So, you know, in the kind of, in our industry, we, we talk about business logic attacks, right? So they're actually using the application the way that a human would use it. Um, they're just doing things that, uh, you know, the the operator of the site wouldn't wouldn't want them to do. So, you know, typically it's a it's human emulation, browser emulation, uh, that sort of that sort of thing. I know I know Marco wants to go somewhere with it, but I, one more quick question: because a bot is it is it bad by design or is it good by design? Can it be built for good and and then accidentally turn bad or can a good one be manipulated to to be bad maybe kind of yeah. describe that a bit no i mean t typically you know they're built for a particular case but a lot of the same underlying infrastructure is used um, whether it's used for uh you know good purposes or bad purposes um you know when what you'll see i don't know if you guys remember maybe 10 years or so ago around that time frame just as there became kind of a uh, a, a market almost for uh, uh ddos attacks right um there now has become you know a market now for bots as a service and that market is actually operating more in clear daylight because there are plenty of reasons why someone would uh, legitimately want to use a bot, you know, some of those reasons that I, that I mentioned before, um, you know, but those um, services are actually also being used by, you know, those who have nefarious intent, you know, who may want to uh, take over uh, a user account in order to, um, you know, steal personal information or maybe use the payment information that's saved within that user account. Or in the case of, uh, 
you know, airlines or hotels or other kind of, um, you know, the travel industry, there's loyalty points and things like that that could be spent or, or transferred. Um, so we see a lot of that and we see a lot of, um, you know, price scraping as well, particularly in kind of the e-commerce domain um, in order to kind of get that um, marginal price improvement to direct, you know, traffic uh, to a competitor's uh, site um, because of the better price and so on. Um, so as we will go, I guess, really soon into what happened in this report, we're talking about these bad bots. And the thing is, they're not created all equal. There are some are a little bit worse than the other. Are we all going to put them in jail and throw the keys? Or <laughs> there are some that are going to get away with the ticket. So I, I know that you have a classification. I'm making it fun. But they, they're classified by you guys according to how much damage, I guess, they can bring. Uh, can, can you define that for us? Yeah, so we've, we've broken down the bot activity really into three main categories. So there are you know, simple bots, and these are bots that are basically just leveraging um, scripting technology, um, like curl. Um, and so they don't necessarily attempt to emulate a browser. Um, they're very basic. Um, they typically have um, kind of singular functions. Um, they're pretty easy to detect as a result. A lot of times they don't process JavaScript, for example. So if you, you know, challenge them with some JavaScript, um, they won't respond uh, the way that a, you know, a full browser would. Those are simple bots, and um, those are relatively easy to, to identify. Um, then there's a class that um, is kind of in between. We call them you know, moderate. And you know, those typically are built on the frameworks that a lot of developers are using now to automatically test their web services. So um, an open source example would be like Puppeteer, right? Or um, Selenium. So these are um, you know, tools that are out there that are designed explicitly for testing purposes to look like a, you know, a real browser. And um, you know, it's a, they essentially are headless browsers, right? And so those ones are a little bit more, more difficult to detect. Um, and then there's what we call you know, advanced bots. And in, in these cases, not only do they present as you know, actual browsers um, and behave um, when challenged as an actual browser, um, but they also try to emulate uh, human behavior. Right, so the way that a person would, you know, move a mouse on a web page, or the rate at which they would kind of, you know, go through a page, and the scrolling and the paths that they would take, um, and so these are much more difficult um, to detect because obviously they, they they present the way a browser and a, and a human would, and you know, as these um, you know bot networks are getting more sophisticated, and as uh, kind of bots as a service, as I was saying, is becoming more professionalized. Um, they're recruiting bots from a wider and wider network. And so a lot of these attacks end up coming in, you may have heard the term, you know, low and slow, right? So, you know, if you're, if you're doing a, you know, a bot attack and you only have, you know, so many hosts, those hosts have to send a lot of requests. If you're spreading them over, you know, a lot of different hosts that are on different residential, you know, IP networks, those could come in. In fact, we saw one attack that was, uh, I think, uh, 9 million uh, you know, uh, hits in about 15 minutes, but it came in over uh, a very distributed, um, you know, set of end, end users. So it was, it was tough to, to, to pick up in that respect. So where, where do they, where and how do they present themselves? Because I know in the report, uh, I believe that it shows a, a rise in the number of bad bots and, so I'm wondering how, how and where do they present themselves? Is, is it there are more bots or the bots are more active or or there are more targets to hit? So that that raises the, the value of what, what you're monitoring. So kind of describe what you're seeing there and perhaps connect it back to previous reports to kind of say where, where things are headed. Yeah, so things unfortunately are... Uh, are getting worse. Um, you know, we're seeing more of those um, advanced bots that we talked about that are, you know, evasive um, and you know emulate human behavior. They're more difficult to detect. And I think what's driving a lot of this is just, you know, naturally more and more services are moving online. I mean, there's been a big trend toward that, obviously, in you know, digital transformation over the last decade or so. But it's really been accelerated by um, the pandemic and other kind of, you know, uh, you know, remote situation. So I think the stakes are higher. Um, I think the attackers have gotten more 
uh, professional and they've gotten more organized. Um, and so I think that makes it um, you know, a bigger, bigger problem than it's ever been. Um, and there's more tools available, like I was saying before, you know, these developer tools and these bot as a service networks. And so, um, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely seeing an increase. And I would say probably the most uh, concerning uh, change we saw year over year was uh, the increase in account takeover. Um, so that grew by about 148% year over year. And account takeover is pretty directly linked uh, to fraud. Right. And so um, just to kind of give you a sense of what what that is, I mean, that's basically you, know, you hear about these data breaches that seem to happen all the time. Um, you know, essentially, these credentials are harvested and sold. And then what ends up happening is these bot operators uh, essentially try these credentials on a bunch of different websites because you know people reuse passwords, you know, even though they're not supposed to. Um, and so you see, we see a lot of that. Um, and then we also just see a lot of brute force uh, dictionary attacks and, you know, password guessing and stuff like that. And so once the once the ATO attack is successful, if it's successful, um, there's a lot to be gained. Um, uh, a lot of times, you know, these attacks are carried out against financial institutions. Um, you know, so there's, uh, you know, high, high stakes I I involved. Now, tell me, is it changed anything in what they do? I mean, they, you said they become more sophisticated to find. Are, are they affecting different verticals than maybe they weren't affecting years ago? Are they doing things that we didn't think they were going to get to do? Are they passing the Turing test? Yeah, I, I mean, I would, I would say that the you know, probably the, the, the biggest takeaway for us is just that this uh, account takeover problem isn't actually a vertical specific problem. I mean, we're seeing um, ATO essentially hit um, all industries, um, really anybody that has um, a login page uh, is potentially subject to, um, you know, an, an, an ATO attack. Um, I think, you know, we're, we're also seeing a lot of um, uh, inventory uh, scalping essentially uh where you know when you have like a, a hot product release um you know bots coming in and buying up the inventory um and reselling it at a higher price um that's a pretty pretty common problem and then uh payment fraud uh where you have uh, bots essentially taking credit card data that they acquired in the, on the dark web and um you know maybe they have the credit card number but they don't have the postcode or they don't have um uh, you know, the CCV. Um, and so, you know, they'll, they'll randomly try those until they, um, until they get it. So you know, definitely seeing a lot. Of, and one of the other things that we see a lot uh, is just a correlation between um, the incidence of these data leaks, and then a subsequent rise in uh, ATO. And so that's something to watch out for. If you're a practitioner, um, you just need to keep your, your guard up um, whenever these big uh, bre breaches happen. So it's as as with many things, when we think of technology, there are multiple teams responsible for multiple things and each in their own wheelhouse. They do they do what they think they need to. And we, we often don't properly connect app development with app security, with security operations. And so a lot of the a lot of what we talked about here seems to be traffic oriented. And I'm just wondering, are there, are there things organizations need to do at the build phase? Because I know um, much more use, wider use of APIs, right? And, mm -hmm. and the cloud and certainly mobile continues to, continues to grow. And I'm just wondering if the complexity of that ecosystem of things uh, may make it more difficult to understand how the bots are working. Um, as they present this, it may, may not just be a network thing. It may be maybe a connection between the two, three APIs that still looks like a human driving, but maybe not. So uh, any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, you bring up a few um, good points. I think definitely, um, you know, mobile, the rise of mobile and API have definitely increased the attack vector, um, but they also present... Uh, you know, new opportunities to, um, you know, secure access uh, to this data. So for example, you know, a lot of the, the travel agents uh, and the travel industry use still price scraping 
um, kind of primitive bot-based price scraping, for example, in order to get airfares and um, other you know, uh, pricing information. And you know, with APIs, you could actually uh, implement that as a secure you know, AP API call, right? With a key that's exchanged um, you know, between you and your um, authorized clients. Um, so that's kind of a, uh, you know, a benefit of some of these technologies. Same with mobile. Um, if you're using uh, you know, a mobile application, uh, you know, we offer an Imperva, for example, an SDK that you can use to, when you develop your application, uh, to uh, secure it from uh, bot misuse. Um, and so there are, uh, you know, I guess it's kind of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it's it's enhanced the, uh, you know, the surface area, but on the other, it's provided, you know, new opportunities to, you know, to secure. Um, but but you're right. It really is. This problem has really become more than just an IT operations problem or even re really more than a security problem. I think um, if you think about the impact uh, to business, um, you know, you have, you know, all the things that you would probably think of, right? You have, um, you know, the increasing network and compute and all that th these bots uh, uh, create. Uh, but then you also have things like, uh, you know, creating friction, uh, for users, right? Because when you're trying to uh, detect whether someone is human or not, you often see captures being used, right? Um, so you've got you've got that cost. You've got lost revenue when competitors are, you know, undercutting your, uh, you know, your prices. Um, you know, you've got skewed marketing analytics, right? Because a lot of these bots are coming in, looking at, say, uh, you know, some items in terms of, uh, you know, retail items, seeing what their price is, um, and then you know, leaving the page, not completing the transaction, obviously, because they're a bot. So that skews marketing analytics and things like that. And so it's very difficult, um, you know, to know, uh, you know, what's going on if you don't have accurate you know, conversion information. So it really is a multi-stakeholder problem. And then, you know, you've got fraud, right? And, and chargebacks and, um, you know, customer uh, churn and all that that's associated with these sorts of attacks. So it's uh, the cost on society is really... I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say all of my online purchases were done by a bot. Can I uh, not pay, please? <laughs> yeah, unfor unfortunately, they tend to not. Uh, well, a, lo a lot of them actually don't follow through and make the purchase. Um, you know, in fact, you all you see a lot of denial of inventory. Uh, so sometimes these bots will come in and basically put a bunch of stuff in the cart, uh, which makes it unavailable, right, to a real legitimate person. Um, and so then, you know, that person has to go to a competitive competitor's website to complete the transaction. Um, so some really interesting tricks you see out there. Yeah, I'm glad that you went there because I'm scrolling through the report and, and I see some interesting, almost curious thing, like bots enrolling in college. Do they actually graduate <laughs> or is it like, <laughs> I think but, they but, but it's the other, years. you know, I mean, and, and then what, what kind of, you know, legal action, <laughs> what kind of legal action can you do? I mean, what's the relationship there with the business? Because we do know that it is a business to use these kind of attacks, right? I mean, the cyber criminals are well organized. They have marketing, they have, operation it's a service as, as you say there so what's what's the answer there that can be done i mean can you bring some example where they're really disrupting the, the business in a certain way yeah so i mean just to kind of uh touch on that bots enrolling in in college kind of what what we saw there so this was um, an education customer of ours um and they found ultimately that uh there were a bunch of you know bogus students that enrolled in uh, in several classes. And, you know, basically the reason for it was, you know, during the pandemic, uh, the government offered uh, some grants uh, to students as a form of relief. And so basically uh, these criminals were signing up for classes that they didn't intend to take in order to siphon some of those funds away. Um, and then, you know, the other things that they, that they were doing was uh, they were creating obviously these .edu addresses that you get as part of signing up and then, you know, reselling those, um, you know, because with that comes discounts to, you know, various services and things like that. Um, and so, Marco, you talked about, well, isn't, I mean, I think you kind of were, were touching on the fact, is this, is this legal, right? I mean, this doesn't sound like it should be legal. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, the act of, of fraud itself is, uh, is illegal. Uh, but the, 
the, these bots, um, you know, themselves are kind of existing in this legal gray area. And so, you know, the law is not going to uh, protect you. And I think that's kind of the message that we've gotten as we've seen some of the, um, you know, the courts adjudicate on some of these, um, these cases. Uh, and so you need technology and you need good, you know, good design to be able to uh, protect yourself. So Ryan, I'm curious how the the conversations go with with some of your customers. Is it they see something interesting and they want your advice on what is it? Is it a bot or is it is it some other I guess malicious software that, that does make it a bot? I don't know where the line is drawn there, but do they come to you and say we're losing money or we see weird activity or our our app is in the midst of a denial of service uh, so our customers can't engage with us interact with us or what do those conversations sound like to to help our audience understand okay we we might see something similar maybe didn't know what it was or who to ask and what to ask yeah so a lot of times we end up getting calls and you know, the customers see essentially a spike in activity on um, their login page in many cases, right? And um, oftentimes, you know, this is the, you know, the account takeover uh, attack taking place. Um, that's a very, um, very common one. So it just in general, traffic spikes, I would say, um, are kind of the number one uh, concern that they have and they ask us um, to dig into the cause. Others are um, maybe a little bit more subtle. Um, and, you know, we were talking about how this is really a multi-stakeholder problem. Sometimes it'll be uh, marketing or the e-commerce team will notice that, um, for example, the conversion rate on uh, their products uh, has gone way down. In the travel industry, they call it uh, the look to book ratio. And it's, it's basically, you know, the number of people who looked at an offering, right, an airfare and, uh, you know, to the number that actually converted and bought it. And so, you know, marketers of all you know, in all industries use those types of conversion ratios to see how competitive their offering is, how well it's taking. Um, and these get all out of whack um, when bots are coming in and not actually um, uh, converting. So that's, you know, that's another big one. Um, you know, we had a customer recently in the financial, uh, basically in the payment industries, uh, uh, noticing that there was, these guys issued gift cards um, that basically they could tell there was a bunch of gift card fraud taking place and they couldn't understand, um, you know, where, where it was coming from. Was it humans? Where was it, kind of, um, you know, or was it bots? Um, so the ten, it tends to be some sort of, um, you know, increase in the rate of something, <laughs> you know? Um, but as I was saying before, at the, at, at the onset of the call, we see a lot more low and slow too, because, you know, the cyber criminals are catching on. Those are the harder ones. Well, it, it is a much larger problem than what I, I think I, well, you can even wrap your head around. And Sean, did here's double, the problem. Did R2 bots on this double to four already? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking because we're already running out of time here in this conversation. And I feel like we should probably talk more about this. So, Sean, any idea? Should we should we do another episode? I think I think we need to keep going with Ryan. Um, I, I, think, I think another session to understand a little more how these things work um some more stories from from uh the field from customers really tackling this problem um and maybe some, they have ideas, it the... some ideas on how to take care of this well, i think that's that's a really important thing to get into because uh, as ryan noted uh, it's not just security and not just it so i think we need to understand what the different roles are the stakeholders who they are and, and the role they play in in uh identifying and addressing this so i think for now marco let's uh let's cop, cut cut here and ryan if, if you're good with that um i think we we covered a lot right uh, what is a bot how does it work why does it work that way what's the impact to the business and uh i think having that initial understanding it goes a long way and, and let's uh let's have another chat to, Digging yeah. into the rest of the stuff. But but we're not going to leave our audience without nothing to check, right? On the notes for this episode, they can find the link to learn more about the report. 
and uh, they will find the link for other conversation that we had with Imperva. And of course, stay tuned because uh, the big boss, Sean, said we can have another conversation about this and uh, we will. So stay right. tuned. Well, I, 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 we're still waiting for Ryan's approval. This is a great conversation, guys. Just love to continue it. So happy, right. happy to be back. Let's do that. Let's do it. So stay Thank tuned. You. More to come. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you learned something new and this story made you think, then share ITSBmagazine.com with your friends, family, and colleagues. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey. You can always find us at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society.